thing is, is how do you, how do you, and why would you want to, you know, connect my IC to a, to, a, to a single quad, triple quad, or to a high resolution mass spec? And then the last one's going to be actually combining your high and full carbon with your ICP mass spec for doing speciation. So, um, well, people don't realize is we have already done a lot of work in the field of ion chromatography mass spec. In fact, there's just kind of a laundry list of all the application notes that we have uh, for combining IC with mass spec. And uh, you can see that there, it, it covers uh, everything from, you know, uh, low molecular weight organic acids and, and the biomass, you know, and, and, and chlorine. And these are some EPA approved methods up here. Uh, polar pesticides and their breakdown products in environmental waters. Most people haven't thought about combining an IC for doing organic pesticides and so on. So let's look at you know why this is, is so beneficial. First of all, if mass specs were so darn good, all you'd have to do is shoot your sample into it and get the answers out. Makes sense, right? Unfortunately, there's a thing called isobaric compounds. Those are compounds that have the exact same mass. Those you can't distinguish. That's why we use chromatography on the front end. Because most times those species don't have the same retention times. So to make life easier, we're putting some type of chromatography, whether it's an LC, a GC, or an IC, on the front end of the mass spectrometer to give us better resolution, better sensitivity, and hopefully better results. So, you know, that's one of the things we're doing. Now, what about, you know, why use mass spec instead of conductivity? Well, mass spec does give us an increase in sensitivity and selectivity, you know, but it is looking at just mass to charge ratio. That's all the mass spectrometer does, mass to charge ratio. So again, you've got to put some separation in there uh, in the front end. A lot of people think about, okay, if I'm going to put an ion chromatograph, I say, no, you're not going to connect an ion chromatograph to my mass spectrometer because you use a salt solution. Okay, you're right, sure do. However, if I'm using either methane sulfonic acid or potassium hydroxide, I go through a thing called a suppressor device, and the suppressor converts that to DI water. I'm not going into the mass spectrometer with potassium hydroxide or methane sulfonic acid. <laughs> it goes through that little device called the suppressor. Now it's just plain old DI water going in there with my analytes already in solution. Life is good. I can't tell you the number of math. Now, I'm a mass spectroscopist. My, my, my PhD is in spark source mass spectrometry, a technique that nobody does anymore or anybody wants to think about. But people talk about putting organic solutions, in, in, in organic solutions into the mass spec. <laughs> not, on my, not on my mass spec denial. So we really have to go out and educate the mass spectroscopist that, you know, with the, with the suppression technology, um, it, it's a beautiful marriage for the IC. So, you know, IC is ideal. First of all, the analytes are already in ionic form. We separate them as ions. So we've already got it there as an ionic constituent. You know, the suppressor allows us to use, you know, standard IC elements and, and reduce it down to essentially just the plain old DI water. And the element generators, I mean, again, both of those convert it to DI water, whether you're using methane sulfonic acid or potassium hydroxide, and so it works great. And the only thing you need the only interface you need between the IC and the mass spectrometer is a grounded stainless steel unit. Hmm. Now, why would that be so damned important? Well, I'll tell you why. We got our aqua system into the laboratory. We hooked it up to the ion chromatograph. Ran a sample through there, went all the way through the the ion chromatograph went into the electrospray source, and guess what happened? Remember, we're talking about an ionic solution in a metal free system with peak tubing. The electrospray source is about four to five kilovolts. And so, right after the sample hit that spray, we got a voltage spike that came all the way back down the line <laughs> from the conductivity detector, through the conductivity detector, through the suppressor, through the separator. <laughs> through the injection valve, because it's a peak valve, and blew up the pump. Mm, man. <laughs> All you need now is a ground and steam still you need, and life, life is good. Everything is really fun, okay? So that's all it takes to, to connect at any ion chromatograph, whether it's this, an Aquion, 
uh, an ICS-5000, you know, a 2100, a 1600, or even a DX-500 if some of you are still using those. That's all you need to connect to a master plumber is a ground to stainless steel unit. Now we're going to be using atmospheric pressure ionization API, and we use that because that is really the interface between the, 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 the liquid part, whether it's a, an IC or an LC, and going into the source. Now essentially what this does is it essentially changes it from a liquid to a gas. We'll show you how that happens in just a second. And so we're only putting gases into the mass spectrometer. We're not shooting solutions into the mass spectrometer itself. So, uh, the ionization source works on two principles. It's called electrospray ionization. That is the primary one that most people use in, in either IC or LC. And then there's also APCI, atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, that's used primarily for normal phase I, or LC separations. Okay? So we're going to be talking primarily in our case about electrospray ionization. 